Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we will be working along with promises and async await. So basically, what are promises and how do you use promises in JavaScript? At the same time, what what makes async and await stands out when it compared with promises? So before speaking about promises and async await, so what are we trying to do in this particular video? Is just trying to fetch a data or make a api request to a third party api by using fetch api so what do you mean by fetch api so fetch api is inbuilt in javascript engine so fetch api is used to make http request to a third party api or any backend server basically a server which has some data in it and fetch that particular data and when you make a request to a certain api so what promises you get from that particular server whether you will receive a data or whether you will receive an error is based on how you decide to deal with promises and async await so basically promise means if you're making a request to a server you will be getting back the data and that data whether you will be getting back that data after some delay or whether you are not getting back the data so that itself is called as promises it's like a promises in the real world if i ask you something hey can you do that for me so you will be telling me yes i can do that for you that is like a promise so if you if you can't you openly you have to say no no i cannot do that so that's how when you when you make a request so all these are part of asynchronous javascript so asynchronous javascript means you you know uh, what what do you mean by asynchronous right asynchronous means something happens in the behind the scenes so if you make a request and it, it takes some time okay uh, it takes some time to get back the response and unless and until it get back the response you are not waiting there to waiting for that particular response by halting your work no so you are continuing your work once the response come you stop that particular work execute this and then resume that work again so that's what asynchronous do so nowhere you are here you are not doing any kind of halting work so everything happens behind the scenes it goes it makes a request it sometimes comes up with promises telling that yes i can do it and i cannot do it and that's how promises work so that was introduced in es6 so this came to this was introduced to overcome a problem called as callback health which was there in es5 and below and after es6 we could solve that particular problem and in es7 the javascript community came up with one more beautiful concept called as async and await and it really really made the life much more easier when it compared to promise which promises which was happening in es6 so we'll see both of that with a single example so single example we'll try to manipulate that in a two different way and we'll try to fetch a data from a third party so that you can nicely understand how the data how we can make a promise request or how we can make a request now the promise has come back and how can hand how can we handle that particular response in terms of fetch api so so before we get started i just wanted to show you something so we will be using json placeholder dot amazing amazing program i think this is kind of a, a fake rest api so wherever you are learning about apis or something i think you can definitely definitely have a look at it i'll place the link of this particular video underneath okay okay so when when you type users i'll you will get a list of all that particular 10 users these are these are random users which has been created by tipicode so you you can just make use of this if you're learning for any kind of purpose and you, you can get started with so this is this is something which i highly recommend uh, so you can get started with apis okay so this data we are trying to fetch it from that fetch api and display it based on the promises on to our console so let's start with promises okay so we'll create a function called as uh, fetch with promise right promise which is a function so we'll declare that to a function and then we will use a fetch so this will go and fetch all this particular data right it, it will fetch all this particular data and it will make a api request so we make we made a http request to this particular data or this particular api and this particular server this particular server json holder server will uh, give back a promise to us telling that okay if 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 there is data if there is data put that inside dot then if there is some error then that's an issue okay so if there is data if if your if your request has been resolved then put that inside dot then so dot then will have a callback function 
okay and it will take a value uh, it will take a parameter called as res and once we do console.log of res and save let us see what happens but before that we need to make sure that we are calling that particular function uh, fetch with prom uh, fetch with promise yes we will call this function so we make an http request Server gave us a promise telling that there is a response and we console.log that response. And if you go here, we get some response back here. So this is not the response what we want, right? We want this particular data. So where is this particular data? We, we did not get that particular. We got some response from the server telling that this is a 200. So if you know what is HTTP status code, so you might be knowing what is 200. 200 means positive, everything goes right, right? So if you go here and if you check, so you are not getting any kind of responses. But if you go inside this proto, you have something called as JSON and we want the data to be in terms of JSON, right? So this data is everything, everything, every data is in terms of JSON. So if you want to fetch that particular data, then we have to go to that particular JSON object inside that particular response. So if you go back to the code and if you write dot JSON, right? Dot JSON, we are still able to get a promise but still we are not getting that particular data we are not getting this particular data here we are getting a promise back and this promise object will have some values something called as promise status so status of the promise is resolved very good that means we are in a good track and the value is array of 10 so inside this value you have this particular data okay inside that json we had this particular promise again so we have this particular data, but this is not what we want. We don't want a promise object anyways. Anyways, we don't want this promise object. We want that particular data to be printing in our console. So in order to get inside this particular promise object, we have to make one more request. So that will give us one more promise. And then I think we can solve this particular data. Instead of console.logging this, we have to make sure that we are returning the returning this particular uh, this particular data right uh, so we are uh, returning this particular uh, json object yeah so we are returning this particular data so after returning this particular data next what are we going to do is we are just making trying to make a one more request so this is inside a callback function so we are trying to make one more request while that we will return one more promise right we are getting one more promise and this is again a callback function and it's it is stored in some data and we want to get that particular data. So now if I do console.log of data, basically what am I doing? I am going through that particular data, it will give me one more promise and I'm handling that particular promise. If I go, I am getting the entire data which I want. So first name is Lenny Graham and yes, you have Lenny Graham here. So this is, this is what we really wanted to get the data. So whenever you are using fetch API, right? You have to make twice you will be getting two promises and you have to handle that promise in such a way that you are fetching the data from that particular API. So I hope you have understood what is promises. So the next one is same way in with the same example, how we can do that with async and await. And you can see the difference here. So const fetch with a, so we'll keep it as a, a means async and await is a function, right? Is a function, we'll make a fetch request. So we make a fetch request, we take this particular value, right? And we paste it here. So we made a request. So normally when we make a request, we get the promise back. That means you, you are getting that inside a dot then. But we are not going to use any kind of dot then here. We are going to use make use of some a keyword called as await. So whatever dot then is available in our promises is equal to await keyword in async and await. Okay, so we have to store this particular data in a variable. So const res is equal to await fetch. But whenever you are using await, you have to make sure that function is an async function. So that function should be async, then only you can use await. Okay, so this, this piece of code is equal to this much. This piece of code is equal to this much. You are making a request, you are getting a dot then and that dot then will return some json data and we are getting we are storing that in await keyword so await keyword is equal to dot then and all this data so in order to in order to check what's happening if you go and see console.log of res if i do and if i go here okay, i did not call the function so fetch with a yeah fetch with a so now you can see the response so what what we got initially right 
So now we have to go inside the JSON again and fetch the data from the JSON. So that will require one more promise. So in order to have one more promise, we cannot do a dot then because this is async and await. So what we can do is we can store that particular data in a data variable and we can do one more await because this is considered as dot then again. So we are doing one more data await and we are just trying to fetch that particular data. Okay, rest dot data. Okay, uh, I think I think yes. So rest, sorry, rest not rest dot data. We are doing rest dot JSON. Sorry, we are fetching the data from a rest dot JSON, right? So JSON is having the data, and now if you do a console dot log of data, we have to get that particular data. Okay, so you can see the difference here, guys. This is like a huge hell of code. You have to do dot then dot then numerous times if there is lots of lots of in depth APIs. But this is in such an easy and a simple way how you can do it. You are making a request, you are storing that in await, so that is, is equal to dot then syntax, and you are storing that in a variable, and then you are making one more request that is a second, second pro probably the second promise. You are storing that in await and storing that in a data variable, and just console dot logging data, and you are calling that particular function. So this is how how a data fetching of data works from a third party API, and then displaying it and handling that particular promise in terms of a promises and so in terms of async and await. I hope this video was helpful. So if you, if you are really interested in learning more, please comment yourself so that I can come up with such kind of a video so that it will be really helpful for the entire development community. Okay, so till then stay safe and happy learning. Thank you so much.